Let's Get Tech Talk. Today we're looking at the Sapphire AMD Radeon HD6870 Flex Edition. So even though the HD6870 came out last year, Sapphire's come out with some updated or upgraded versions. This one here, the Flex Edition, we're going to be looking at first. Okay, and it allows you to hook up Ifinity monitors without an active display adapter, for example. The VaporX Edition, part of the VaporX quality series for overclocking extra cooling capacity that the VaporX has we'll look at separately in a new video afterwards but today we're going to focus on the flex edition and the good thing about both of them is that they're just as fast they're both based on the same GPU we're just going to look at what are the major differences between both of them now technology wise they both support the same technologies okay so but we want to concentrate on the affinity support and all the cables and connections that you would ever need to hook up three monitors. So for example, a mini display port to display port, an HDMI cable comes included, a DVI to HDMI, a DVI to VGA, crossfire and power connectors for your Molex to six pin. Complete package, okay, this is a premium complete package. You rarely get so many connectors in a package with a video card, so this is terrific. Now. The whole point of the Sapphire card and, and, and the look and feel of it just by looking at it is no different than the VaporX when you just s see it. But if you look closely, the VaporX will have different cooling inside at this point and you'll see that in my next video. This one here has great cooling, it looks same size, it has the same connectors, but like I said, the difference between the Flex Edition is that it's more flexible for you to hook up three monitors for example for an Ifinity experience you don't need to have an active display port adapter now in GPU-Z looking at the stats here for the flex edition you can see it has 1120 shader processors GDDR5 memory of course one gig of it and the highlight of course as well is that in fact it has 900 megahertz of GPU core clock and 1050 megahertz of memory clock so the memory and GPU are very fast Temperature wise at idle you can see here 37 degrees Celsius 35 it, you know it hovers around there and um, the fan speed is quite low at about 1050 RPM so not bad at all when it comes to the defaults running it as is here is the test system that I'll be installing this on terrific AMD system if you're looking to build something similar I'm telling you the benchmarks really proved that the GPU score 15929 compared to other GPUs that I've tested is pretty high okay so even though this is late last year's model it still outperforms many different cards okay it's definitely a lot of the 5800 series here is the 3d mark 11 okay if you're looking for those benchmarks and the Cinebench look at the GPU scores here that I got on Cinebench I compared it to the 6950 Okay, so the 6870 compared to the 6950, both are default clocks and overclocked. Default clock is the dark orange, the overclocked 6870 is the light orange, and you can see that it outperforms the 6900 series even. So 6950 that is, not the 6970. Of course, that's the fastest. Now, when we look at these type of cards, we're trying to think, okay, why would you run hardware acceleration why would you have that enabled the uh, the encoding for that well it decreases the CPU usage and you can see here that I'm converting an AVI file to an mp4 file and the CPU usage is actually low it's about 35 to 40 percent and that's because the GPU is kicking in to assist and help in the encoding if I were to turn that off you're gonna see what's gonna happen now it took about a minute and 40 seconds by the way to do that conversion now I'm not going to enable the hardware encoding and now the CPU has to do basically all the work and you can see now that my AMD uh, 1090T uh, 6 core CPU is running about 60% um, and it took 15 seconds longer to complete so definitely there's huge advantages in having uh, a GPU like this enabled for that now when it comes to gaming terrific results here on HD settings 1920 times 1080 so there you go and also at the Ifinity setup so I hooked up three monitors and uh, you can see also the benchmark results at 
uh, 5040 times 1050. So this gives you an idea on how this card performs both at default overclocked and of course at the default clocks using Affinity. That's three DVI um, monitors connected to the back. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. Now, here's Crisis Warhead, which really puts to the test the, uh, the card, I tell you. Dirt 2 has a slightly uh, lighter engine, not as demanding, so you can run basically at very high settings and get terrific results on Ifinity, no problem. And uh, here's Stalker Call, and you can see that I run everything on high. I ran two different benchmarks, one at 1680 times 1050. That these are the results for that. And you can see how high and how low the frames per second are. And then here is the results at HD at 1920 times 1080. Okay. Now, when we hook this up in the Flex Affinity setup, you see I've got two DVI connectors directly natively plugged right in. And then this one here is the HDMI to DVI connector that it came with and all I did was plug in my other DVI monitor to that connection so now basically I have three DVI monitors plugged in and I can get the Ifinity okay I don't need one of those mini display port to active or anything like that you can hook up up to five monitors by the way if you want with this but for this demonstration I've got three DVI monitors all I did was go into the Catalyst Control Center and clicked on the little triangle there, clicked on duplicate, and duplicated all three monitors. So it said one, one, one. So they're all going to be one single large surface. And then I created a group. And then you can see here three displays. And then that's it. I've got now one large display. Now I could swap that middle display and put in an HDMI monitor instead. And that's what I did just to show you. So you can plug in an HDMI cable directly to an HDMI monitor and not use the uh, DVI to HDMI and, and have a different combination of monitors in order to have Ifinity. So it works very well. 5040 times 1050, there you go. That's the setup. Overclocking, I did a little bit of overclocking. 100 megahertz more on the GPU and you can see there a teeny bit more on the memory clock. Temperatures did rise, of course. I had to increase the fan speed big time to 60% in order to keep the temperatures down. So you can see that the fan is running a little bit higher and it does get louder, of course, but then you get more performance. Here is a quick chart that shows you more or less how this card compares to others and the price ranges. Okay, these are estimated prices. They are subject to change, but overall, Terrific card, great performance. I love the Affinity setup. The flexibility of it is definitely a big plus. And I'd like to thank Sapphire for providing it. And I hope you enjoyed this video and watch my next one on the VaporX edition. Thank you.